Ooh, baby, it's time to ride the funk train. This is Funk Master V. I've been sick for like two weeks, maybe 20 days, and I just got fired from my Atari podcast, the Atari Network by John Stoll. So I've been out of the loop for a couple weeks, so I was trying to repair my body and my ego, but I'm back. And there's a new game on the Atari 7800 library, and also the Atari VCS, and that game is called Block'em Sock'em, and I wish this was a game about boxing robots, but it's a game by John Hancock, the immortal ha John Hancock. This guy calls himself immortal, even though there was a an immortal document signed by a guy named John Hancock who wrote his name larger than anybody else is making his own signature immortal. No, this guy that in, in, in reviews in television games, he's the immortal one. Actually, this guy is a nice dude. He's one of these reviewers that um, I always go to if I'm feeling on the fence about a game. He always kind of provides a positive slant. So he's made his own game. He's made a few games. This is a puzzler. You can buy it on the Atari VCS store right now for $8.99, or you can wait for the cartridge to be released on his website, I guess, for $50. Bucks. And we're going to go over some of the differences between the two and whether or not you should even care. Since the beginning of time, there's only been one website with the Baba Wongs to claim every game review when it came to the pro system, and that's Atari7800forever.com. But now it's time to get on that YouTube trip, babies. And who am I? I'm Funkmaster V, musician, ghost hunter, hat flipper, pro wrestler, comedian, actor, filmmaker, and I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour of all things cool about Atari and the Atari 7800 with a podcast, news, even new crap. Baby, are you ready to get your groove on? Because it's about to get funky up in here. There seems to be a trend right now where video game reviewers are getting their own video games, which that means soon, and I can't wait, I get to start my own dating simulator where I try to put the moves on Charlie's Theron. Don't make me kick I, you in the shin. Uh, again. I won't kick you in the shin. The Atari 7800 definitely needs more puzzle games, and uh, so does the Atari VCS. They both need games, period. Uh, this title was developed for the Jaguar, the Super Nintendo, and a myriad of other platforms. And I believe this game was made by Daryl1970, which is his handle, uh, Daryl Gunther, who's the uh, legendary mind behind Popeye, which was his first homebrew ever, and one of the greatest Atari 7800 games to ever float down the pike. So this game just has some issues from the beginning with me. Uh, you take over John Hancock, who's a middle-aged, bearded, uh, chubby guy, which, uh, you know, I guess we all should be used to with Mario. But there's something about this guy. I'm just like, I, I don't know what we're doing. We're a guy with a baseball cap and a mortgage and probably a, a slightly high A1C, and we're throwing blocks towards the ceiling. Not sure what's going on. I would have been happier with a robot or a pixie or some sort of goofy-looking anime chick. Uh, but for have this guy who's smiling at me and kind of moving his hands in weird ways, I'm just not drawn into this universe. Don't know what we're doing? Don't care. There's something about these puzzle games. Ambiguity is good. In Tetris, there's the Cold War and Russian stuff, and there's like guys doing Cossack dances, and we're all freaking out. And in Clax, there's a conveyor belt system. What are we doing? I don't know, but you better hurry. You're going to get fired. Uh, same thing with Columns. You know, there's like all these hieroglyphics and and Egyptian stuff, and if we don't do well, maybe we'll get a dart to the neck, or, you know, something horrible will happen to us, like a boulder chasing us down a hallway. Here, the ambiguity exists, but the main character is somebody I don't relate to or want to help, for because I just don't know what's going on and I don't care. And the game does not do a great job explaining what to do right away. Uh, it doesn't take long to figure it out. We're throwing blocks up into the sky and i wish somebody of john's age there he needs a back brace uh i'm just i'm not going to call osha now but if somebody could tell him uh, get a back brace on buddy these blocks look heavy and, and you don't need to be throwing uh, things that high into the sky at this age but the uh you take it like a purple block you throw it up and you try to eliminate as many blocks as you can of that color 
and each board has some sort of layout that it wants you to figure out. You need to clear a certain amount of blocks each level with a certain amount of throws. And once you achieve that goal, you can go to the next level. And uh, the game works pretty well. Uh, I read there was 25 levels. There's actually 29. You have a difference of, uh, you have an easy, a medium, and a hard difficulty, or maybe it's called expert. Uh, but these uh, decrease your number of tosses, and there's a little bit of strategy here. Again, at the end of the day, I just feel like this game is a little bit arbitrary. Uh, the difficulty seems to ramp up in some places. And then, for example, level 17 was pretty hard for me to figure out. Level 18 was one of the easiest levels in the game. So there really is no progression feeling. Uh, don't know why we're doing this. Why are we trying to clear blocks with blocks? And uh, why are we trapped in this weird room? Um, so it kind of hurts. Uh, overall, the immersion process, the it's just, it's not a bad game. It is a puzzler. I've seen some people think this game is awesome. This one just isn't for me. I feel like it's uh, just not firing on all cylinders. I read that there was 25 levels. When I got to level 25 and got to 26, I got disheartened because I wasn't having any fun. And then uh, decided the other day for this review to go and try to beat the game. And it got to level 29. 29 is the, the end. Um... <clears throat> And you get to um, see the ending of the game, which isn't too spectacular, and put your uh, see how well you did on the points. Some interesting things. I know I'm sounding like I'm poo-pooing on this thing, uh, and I don't want uh, John, who's a jolly guy, to be upset uh, at, at my review of his game. But uh, a couple good things here that I do like. Um, I do like the graphics in the background. Ve they're very reminiscent on the 7800 version of like uh, Scrapyard Dog. Um, I don't know, there's something kind of urban about it that I do like, so I like that kind of flavor. The blocks are colorful, um, the animations are good, uh, and uh, the, the puzzle as it goes uh, works. Um, the best thing about this game by far is when you clear off a level and the door opens, John automatically starts to leave the room. But at this point, you can throw the block up into the sky, and if it clears off, any other blocks it actually helps your point total you can actually kind of cheat me being a bad guy wrestler I love cheating so I kind of feel like clearing these blocks uh, with free tosses on the way out of the door secretly is kind of a sneaky sneaky way to get better points and I do love that part of this game it's my favorite part by far also interestingly enough uh, the the cartridges that mr. Hancock are selling has a Yamaha sound or a pokey chip or advanced music that uh, I've listened to samples of that and it sounds okay it sounds like slightly irritating but the sounds and the music are pretty good and also if you have audio vox you get to hear John's voice say like hoo and don't touch my nipples well, I don't I don't know what he says because I don't I didn't have it hooked up but he does say things that encourage you I've heard it on the Super Nintendo Pretty cool, especially if you're a fan of John and you like his voice. He, he does have a nice voice. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's like ASMR to you as well. It can put you to sleep as he's sitting there cooing you uh, with praises. Uh, on the uh, VCS version, they don't have, interestingly enough, uh, Pokey Sound being able to work on the VCS store. So you have this TIA, the old 1970s Atari 2600 sound, and it is pretty brutal. The music is bad, but you can turn it off. Cut it off. For $8.99 on the VCS, that's not really a bad value. To spend $50 on a cart, you're either a completionist or you just like John. I'm going to buy one, of course, because I'm a big old sucker. Now look, I, I can't imagine trying to make a puzzle game. I think that would be insanely difficult. And I applaud the attempt. And everybody, and, and, and I'm ignorant of the other versions. The Genesis version may be tremendous. The Super Nintendo may be... But from where I'm sitting and where I'm standing, I, I think this this game is just not the greatest in the world. I just think it's not very well planned out. And uh, just because it's a puzzle game doesn't mean it's a good puzzle game. 
and uh, take it for what it's worth. So this game's going to be uh, on the lower end of the Atari VCS games right now, and uh, there's other things on the VCS store for you to horse around with and try out that I think are better. Okay, <clears throat> well anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. God bless you all. I'm going to have more video game content up on the Atari 7800 Forever YouTube page this week. Make sure you check that out. And as always, keep checking out Big and Funky Productions YouTube page for comedy, movie, and horror related stuff and, and all that jive. And if you can get a hold of John Stoll II, Silverback, from the Atari Network, uh, tell him I miss him.